local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. We are following the two major stories today at four. Right now, the Ocala uh, and farm worker communities are still reeling from that devastating bus crash that happened yesterday. This afternoon, we're hearing from the victims' families, and we're finding out new details about the suspect's lengthy criminal background. But first at four, it's a first warning weather day as our area has already seen several tornado warnings today. Good afternoon, I'm Nancy Alvarez. And I'm Jesse Pagan. Our first warning weather team is keeping a close eye on these storms as they move through central Florida. Marquise Mita is tracking what we can expect through this evening. But first, Chief Meteorologist Tony Manolfi has a look at what's happening right now. Tony. All right, Jess, thanks a whole bunch. And uh, welcome to West 2, by the way. Good news here, guys. Severe thunderstorm watches being clipped now. Marion, Sumter, Polk County has just been allowed to move out of that severe thunderstorm watch. Overall, the number of lightning strikes is coming on down. I uh, will take you up north, a little cluster of some showers and an isolated thunderstorm weakening on approach to the land. So some good news here, building off towards the Leon Springs, the land and Forest Hills over the next half hour. Uh, storm blew up there over Titusville, getting ready to pull off of the uh, Kennedy Space Center. Things are quiet in the metro areas, but off towards the west, there are a few showers redeveloping. These will push into the metro areas, a few lighter showers now here back towards Kissimmee. This will continue to build off towards the east. So overall, Marquise, the trend through the evening does look a whole lot better. And with more on that, let's check in with Marquise. Thank you, Tony. We're taking a peek at the timeline of events right now as we continue throughout the rest of the afternoon and into the evening here in Central Florida. And as you did mention, the watches that we have, the severe thunderstorm watches, have fallen apart for our northern and westernmost counties. Now, we are still anticipating another round of storms across I-95 before we transition from the afternoon and into the evening. But tonight, we'll watch those storms continue to push offshore. Then tomorrow will be much hotter as conditions continue to dry out. Where we have the best chance for any convective activity tonight, that's going to be south of the I-4 corner and across I-95 into Brevard County, where temperatures are still trending fairly warm. We got a cluster of lower 80s and upper 70s here at 4 o'clock, and you notice the dew points, they're not too far away from the temperatures that we saw just a moment ago. So we do still have the instability and the moisture present for a few extra storms before the afternoon is said and done. And once the driving force behind these storms is the cold, continuing to push south across our sunshine state. So we'll take you through it on future cast right now. We still see with this model in particular, a couple showers across the I-75 quarter. These push towards the south and the east and then anywhere between five and six o'clock. That's when the last line of thunderstorms will continue to push east across I-95 before we gradually begin to clear out and we'll see a lot more sunshine in the forecast tomorrow. And we'll take a look at those temperatures coming up in about 15 minutes. Remember, you can track storms right on your phone with our free West 2 News mobile app. Also, be sure to turn on notifications so we can alert you when conditions change in your neighborhood. Today, we're learning new details about that heartbreaking bus crash in Ocala. It left eight farm workers dead and sent 45 others to the hospital. Right now, most have been released, but seven are still in critical condition. Meanwhile, the driver of the pickup truck that crashed into the bus on State Road 40 is already facing consequences. Brian Howard is now in jail for DUI manslaughter after telling deputies he smoked before getting behind the wheel. We have live team coverage this afternoon. Our investigative reporter, Greg Fox has a look at the suspect's long rap sheet. We're also hearing from a man who lost his brother in this crash. But we begin with West 2's Spencer Tracy at the Marion County Jail. Spencer, the pickup truck driver, appeared in court today. He did just he is awaiting trial on DUI manslaughter charges, and we got the new arrest report, and that shows the moments that led before and after the crash. So Howard will not be able to bond out and he will remain here in the Marion County Jail and he's he set for his next hearing on June 18th. Reporting in Ocala, Spencer Tracy, West 2 News. Eight families are now mourning the loss of a loved one and those who were on the bus when the crash happened are, of course, shaken up and with very little to say. Now, West 2's Pamela Combe is live in Gainesville where dozens of workers are currently staying. Pamela, you talked with one man who lost his brother in this crash. Yeah, I did. And he's understandably very heartbroken, really just trying to figure out what comes next. He said he and his brother had been coming to the States for years to make money and support their families back home. 
And many workers are still unsure if and when they'll go back to work. Right now, they're staying at the Days Inn Hotel in Gainesville until they hear otherwise. Reporting in Gainesville, Pamela Combe, Wash 2 News. It's heartbreaking. Mm. And just moments ago, the Mexican consulate provided an update on how they are supporting the victims' families and survivors. Uh, Luana Munoz was there. Luana, what did you hear from them at this point? You know, the Mexican consulate has been very busy today. Their primary goal was to really contact the victims' families back in Mexico to let them know what's going on. And as you can imagine, they are all in shock right now. Now, the consulate says that their next step, of course, is to help those families in Mexico that want to come here uh, to the United States to identify their loved ones. Another issue that they ran into was talking with the employer. The employer didn't know all of the names of the individuals that were on that bus. So they're trying to identify each and every one of those migrant workers so that the consulate can contact them and provide them with the resources and the support that they might need. Uh, we also learned that there are three people remaining in critical condition, at least that's according to the Mexican consulate. They went yesterday to the hospital and today that they're reporting that three remain in critical condition. We're going to continue to stay out here and try to get the latest updates for you uh, live on air and on our website at WESH.com. But for now, reporting live in Orlando, I'm Luana Munoz with WESH 2 News. Continuing our live team coverage of this deadly bus crash, the suspect, Brian Howard, has been in trouble with the law for more than two decades. West 2 News investigative reporter Greg Fox is here with us now. And Greg, a lot of outrage here. Some people wondering why Howard hasn't been punished more severely for these repeated offenses. Well, those are good questions because consider this. Brian Howard has been convicted at least 20 times since 2003. Just take a look at some of his mug shots here along the wall. It's a regular photo gallery, some of these going back to 2005, 2007, 2009. Most of the crimes are related to crashes and other traffic offenses, except for one and eight month sentence for grand theft. He seldom spent more than a day or so in jail. Thank you, Greg. Now we're still learning new details about this devastating crash. To get the latest information as soon as it comes out, download the West 2 News app. We'll send you push alerts like this one as soon as we learn any new information. Developing in Texas right now, a bridge has partially collapsed after a barge crashed into it. This is happening in Galveston. No word yet on what exactly led to this accident, but investigators say the crash actually caused an oil spill. Good news, though, no one was hurt in this. We'll keep you updated. As many of us know in Central Florida, we are just weeks away from the next hurricane season. And right now, everyone from the National Hurricane Center to uh, AT&T is ready. West 2 News is live at the Governor's Hurricane Conference. That's next. Plus. A man hit and killed in a parking lot while simply doing his job. The important message from Florida State Troopers. The Jacksonville Jaguars are working to seal the deal to build a new football stadium that could be the envy of the NFL. All right, so why does Orlando care? West Shoes Michelle Meredith is live in downtown Orlando. And Michelle, connect the dots for us because local football fans, the hype <laughs> is already growing with them. Well, you know, while that stadium is under construction, the Jags need a place to play their games. We're only a couple of hours down the road, so to make a long story short, now I talked to the president of the Jags, and he said the NFL is familiar with Camping Roll Stadium. It has the seating needed. There are plenty of hotels and plenty of reasons to make a weekend out of it. And also in the running, Gainesville at the University of Florida. Live in Orange County, Michelle Meredith, West 2 News. All right, a lot of excitement there and a lot of excitement here. Anything new around here, Tony? Anything, have you noticed anything <laughs> we're, we're, get, we're getting ready to end this active weather for me. That's, That's a good. big deal. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> We've got a new guy here, too. Yeah, more uh, on that in just a moment. We're going to forget about it. <laughs> more on that in just a moment. Jesse, but... good to have you uh, with us on board. Tell us about yourself. I know a lot of viewers will want to know about you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're going to find out a lot about me in probably about the next 20 <laughs> yeah, minutes or so. we have a, a special uh, segment for you yeah, guys coming I'll up. I'll keep shortly. it at this. Uh, I'm a local guy. I grew up in Volusia County, graduated from Deltona high uh florida gator and then i've been around the country for a little bit yeah. and now i'm back home so that means your storms he's not you know he's ready for whatever you got you ready for an action <laughs> I, was, I was made by them i grew up in them <laughs> but, but you've been away for a while so I you, you gotta get reacquainted i'll tell you this much this yeah. morning storm definitely woke me up a little early mm -hmm. definitely was like what is that right. 
but that's kind of long gone now. Yeah, I didn't know it was going to be on the morning show this morning, but that's the way it panned out. It's so. weird when they're early. <laughs> I, I know, it's right? so weird. All right, let's take you back outside. Look, listen, great news is the storms are clearing out of Marion County. Look at the blue skies, Jess. You gotta love that up there at the square. We take a look now at uh, the rest of Central Florida. Look at those temperatures now. 83 Orlando, 76 in the land. We are getting better and better with each passing hour. Again, just got this literally moments ago. The severe thunderstorm watch for all of Central Florida has been allowed to be canceled. That's that drier air finally working back in. The front, though, is still to the north. We still could have a lingering thunderstorm or two, especially from Orlando on south. Still plenty of heat and humidity south of Orlando. A few showers here back towards the land, over towards New Smyrna Beach. This is racing quickly now at about 40 to 45 miles an hour. This could fill in here a little bit over towards the attractions in the south side of Lake Apopka. Cluster of showers and storms has moved away from the Kennedy Space Center. There's Kissimmee, there's Cocoa Beach, just a couple light showers. So again, for me, I think the biggest area to watch over the next hour or so is gonna be south of Orlando. Could be a few uh, damaging wind gusts and hail reports there, but again, overall, the severe weather threat diminishing from north to south. Peak wind gusts today, 41 Winter Haven, New Smyrna Beach, 35. So we were in that 35, 45 mile an hour range. Beautiful news here. Look at these rainfall reports today. West of land, Eustis, Paisley, Altoona, Marquis, hooking me up with some of the rainfall totals there. For you, will have a couple more in the next half hour. So again, muggy night, but drying out. Severe weather threat ending here over the next hour uh, from Orlando on south. As we take a look at the day planner for tomorrow, dry. Get out there and enjoy. It's going to be hot, though, so we do want you to be mindful of that. Future cast here showing just a few clouds uh, down to the south. Noontime looking pretty good. Few clouds, uh, temperatures climbing climbing up into the upper 80s and the lower 90s. Let's put it all together here for you. Normal high should be about 88 tomorrow. We're in the uh, upper 80s to the lower 90s back through the interior. And if you are headed to the attractions tomorrow, just know this. It is going to be a little hot. You need the sunblock. And uh, again, stay hydrated. We head into the weekend. Another round of showers and storms will likely develop as we get back into a more active weather pattern again. We'll talk more about that coming up in the next half hour. For now, let's put it all together for you here. 92 on Thursday, 95 on Friday, 48 hours of quiet time. We head into the weekend. The heat is on Saturday. Storms return Sunday, but drying out by the middle of next week. Some of the very best hurricane experts in the country are in West Palm Beach today. They're preparing for the next hurricane season just less than one month away. First morning meteorologist Eric Burris joins us live from the Governor's Hurricane Conference. Eric, it's a busy day and such a great opportunity for you guys to learn from each other. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we had the nasty storms across central Florida today, but down here it was all focused on hurricane season. The expo floor opened up today. The officials from the National Hurricane Center arrived today. Love that. That is such a wonderful focus because the science is good. I mean, it really is. But as much focus is there, it also needs to be on improving the messaging so when hurricanes hit, we're able to make sure every person knows what their threats are. I know Tony and I have constant discussions reevaluating that very thing in our weather department, and certainly it's good to know that the Hurricane Center is doing that as well. Back out here live, the expo floor is open. Uh, there are so many different vendors from the Tiger Dams that Volusia County knows so well after hurricanes, Ian and Nicole. Uh, the cell phone companies are there just talking about what they're doing so that as emergency managers tour around, they can shake hands, trade business cards that way. Should a storm impact a local community, you know who to call, you know the person to reach out to, and of course, you can get your community back real quick. Uh, coming up at five, this is an interesting discussion I had, continuing with the Hurricane Center director on how Florida's age actually plays into how we should be preparing for storms. All new at five. But for now, that's the very latest from the Governor's Hurricane Conference in West Palm Beach. Eric Burris, West 2 News. All right, Eric, really important stuff down mm. there. And coming up, we're going to have a little fun over here. We're going to get to know our newest <laughs> co-anchor, Jesse, and find out more about his strong ties to Central Florida. No, thank you, thank you. Plus, our team coverage continues on the severe weather across Central Florida. Tony? And right now, Jesse, we are keeping an eye on a couple of thunderstorms down near Haines City and Lakeland could kip, clip Kissimmee. We'll talk more about that for you straight ahead. 
Fresh 2, we're dedicated to covering Volusia County. Now, this still remains quite an active scene. From breaking news to the stories that impact you. I'm Pamela Combe, and I'm committed to covering your community. Fast, accurate reporting straight from your neighborhood. The Volusia County Bureau, only on West 2 News. Local, live, late-breaking. Selena Gomez on the moment she knew Benny Blanco was the one, and Ariana, Cynthia inside their Wicked Auditions, next Access Hollywood. Wesh 2 News continues. All right, more in our top story now today. Families are continuing to mourn the loss of eight farm workers killed in a bus crash in Ocala. Seven people are still in critical condition this afternoon. On Tuesday, a truck driver sideswiped the bus, leaving it crushed and overturned on the side of State Road 40. The workers were from Mexico here on a visa. There will be a vigil tonight for the victims in Apopka. The Farm Workers Association is hosting that candlelight vigil starting at 6 tonight. The driver of the pickup truck will stay behind bars. Police say he admitted he'd been smoking marijuana and used prescription drugs the night before the crash. He now faces eight counts of DUI manslaughter. One of the many organizations stepping up to help during this tragedy is Mothers Against Drunk Driving. They're making sure families of the victims and survivors get the help they need to get through this difficult time. We offer court accompaniment, basically, so we ensure that we have advocates on hand that will attend court with the victims and survivors to help explain that process, to be that kind of shoulder to be supportive of, and to just be present with them to offer any explanations and guidance and support, as well as victim vigils. MADS Helpline is open 24 hours a day to serve victims in crashes like the one we saw in Ocala. That number is there on your screen, 877-275-6233. And important to note in our community, because of cases like this one, Spanish speakers are available through that line. Our coverage of the impacts of this crash does not stop here. We have much more coming up tonight at 5 and 6 o'clock. Coming up at 5.30, our investigates team looks into the trucking company that was transporting the farm workers to Dunellen. And our other top uh, story today, the severe weather that's been moving through central Florida really since this morning. Mm -hmm. Our team weather coverage continues this afternoon. Marquise Mita tracking what we can expect tonight. But first, Chief Meteorologist Tony Manolfi starts things off. Tony, how are conditions looking outside right now? Yeah, you know, we're improving. They just dropped the severe thunderstorm watch here within the last 15 to 20 minutes, guys. So all of central Florida is out of that risk for what we think is going to be severe weather. Now, there's still some lightning strikes down here across the southern reaches of our viewing area. So we'll watch one or two friskier storms. But for the most part, uh, the worst of uh, the energy today is over. Look at uh, Daytona Beach. A couple quick showers coming at you there up and down the I-4 corridor for the front end of the evening commute. Metro areas for now are quiet. There are some showers developing over towards the south side of Lake Apopka. And the one area that we're watching here, Marquise and I, is this cluster of storms coming up the I-4 corridor. Could make it on into Intercession City and Kissimmee between about now and about 515 this evening. From there, things will improve overnight tonight with more on that. Here's Marquise. Thank you, Tony. It looks like the severe weather threat, as you were just mentioning, uh, we've dropped the watches that we've seen prior already this afternoon. So we're, we're out of the way of the watch, but we're not quite yet out of the way of the precipitation. So ongoing showers will likely still be possible south of I-4 and towards the I-95 quarter as we continue throughout the afternoon. But this evening, we'll watch those storms clear out, and tomorrow will be much hotter and much drier, a trend that will carry into the end of the upcoming work week. Take a look at the big picture. It's this cold front that's allowing for the instability or allowed for the instability previously in the afternoon. You see, we were much more active here on radar and satellite imagery earlier in the day, but those storms are now fading and pushing towards the south and the east. Current temperatures show a mix of 80s and 70s across the board, mid 80s here or lower 80s here inside the metro. And we see that similar trend in Bithlow, St. Cloud, Palm Bay and Melbourne, and that's where we could possibly see some storms uh, still late this afternoon. So taking a peek on the future cast, timing it out hour by hour. These continue to push towards the east, but by 8, 9 o'clock, much drier conditions here on the future cast. And we'll carry that dry trend into tomorrow with those warmer temperatures that we'll take a look at coming up in about 15 minutes. A man run over in a Seminole County parking lot killed while doing his job. As West 2's Dave McDaniel explains, the victim was not just hit, he was dragged. Troopers cannot say what the lighting was at the time of the incident. 
All right, today we are welcoming a new member to the West 2 News family, Jesse Pagan, our newest anchor at the station. But Central Florida really isn't new to you, right, Jesse? No, it's not. No. Nope. <laughs> All right, Jesse grew up in Volusia County, and that is where I got to know a little bit more about him. And um, I got to meet your very excited parents. <laughs> Hello! Weba, weba. <laughs> hello, hello! Llegó West 2? What better place to get to know Jesse Pagan than a small cafe in Orange City where his parents are regulars? Everybody, meet Papi and Mommy! Hey. Isn't this awesome? So, this is Un Sueño Cafe. Un Sueño Cafe yes, means it's... the dream in Spanish, mm -hmm. which is, isn't that kind of what this is coming home? <laughs> <laughs> kind of fitting, maybe, yeah. Born in Ponce, Puerto Rico, Jesse's journey reflects one of Central Florida's fastest growing populations. Born and raised there, Spanish is my first language, the whole shebang. Bobby was in the military at that point, he was about to retire. And mommy found Deltona on the map and did some Googling, and next <laughs> thing we know, we were here. Elementary was Deltona Lakes. Middle? Uh, middle school was Galaxy Middle School. And high school? High school, I went to both of them in Deltona. I went to Pine Ridge, and then I graduated from Deltona High. But the move to the mainland, just before he turned eight years old, never removed him from his culture. His parents made sure of that. I remember mommy would say, you know, en esta casa se habla español. Afuera tú vas a estar hablando inglés por todos lados. En esta casa se habla español. That sounds like me talking to my kids. <laughs> In this house, we speak Spanish. And, you know, as a kid, you're like, ah, oh, mommy, whatever. But in hindsight, what, you know, 25 years later, now I'm like, that's what kept me bilingual. It's a skill that's helped immensely throughout his career. After college at UF, Jesse worked in Fort Myers, Columbus, and San Diego, representing every step of the way. In San Diego, I had the privilege of hosting San Diego's uh, Pride Parade. And okay, our... so Pride, you looking for a host? <laughs> that connection to the LGBTQ community had its foundation in a place that lives in the hearts of many in our community. Pulse was the first gay club I ever went to. I think I was maybe 18 years old. I went with some friends from high school. and I think you can speak to what Latin night at Pulse meant to people. Yeah. I mean, that was huge. It was a safe space for not only Latinos, but gay Latinos in Central Florida. When the shooting happened, I think it rocked two communities at once and then maybe in a roundabout way brought them together. Communities that have grown significantly in the 10 years Jesse's been gone. It's like you're walking through the store and out of nowhere you hear, oh yeah, mira, mira esto. <laughs> ah, pero mira lo otro. You hear those little bits of conversations more and more and more. He's looking forward to reconnecting to the people, the food. The Puerto Ricans call them empanadillas. Uh -huh. The Cubanos call them empanadas. Uh -huh. So, you know, we're also learning a thing or two here about our culture. Two sides of the same quarter. And the loving family that saw this coming long before Jesse ever did. When he started to go to college, okay, we were going down I-4, and I saw the tower, and I told him, one day I will see your face up there. Yeah. On the West 2 yeah. Tower. On the West 2 Tower. And voila. There he is on the <sighs> West 2 Tower. I'm going to yell at him. I'm going to cry I now. know. Bueno, Papi, you called it. You called okay. it, Papi. Here yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's uh, it's wild to think about. It's definitely, it's been a few days. Today's my first day on air, but mm -hmm. I started on Monday. Uh, and it's... Um, wild to walk these halls, meet my mm -hmm. now co-workers, meet you, honestly. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, a dream kind of come true, un sueño, that yeah. I didn't even really know I had, but it's there. Well, we're so um, glad you're here. We yeah. look forward to working with you, and I look forward to representing with you. Thank so, you. Thanks thank for you. Coming. And thank you at home. And it's, um, it's empanada, not empanada. Empanadilla, mija. Okay, we'll see about that. All right, <laughs> next to four, a Central Florida family wants everyone to know the answer to the question, who is Jay? Yeah, they're hoping their son's story will educate other families about mental health, how they're turning their pain into purpose. Closed captioning is sponsored by Rubenstein Law. Injured? Call 1-800-FL-LEGAL. 
Who is Jay? That's the question one Central Florida couple loves to answer. It's part of their mission in memory of their son who died by suicide more than a decade ago in Daytona Beach. In today's Mental Health Week report, West 2's Christina Watkins tells us about their journey through grief and their push to educate others about mental health. The Who is Jay Mental Health Symposium was today in Daytona Beach. West 2's Christina Watkins was there. Coming up at 7, find out why SMA Healthcare got behind this mission and learn about some of the educational tools they're providing to help hundreds of people. Also, if you or someone you know is in crisis, there is help. 988 is the Suicide in Crisis Lifeline. It's available 24 hours in English and Spanish. There are also several other mental health resources throughout Central Florida. We put together a list on our website, wesh.com. Tony, a couple things to watch out for, mm -hmm. especially for people who might be having their commute in a little bit yep. down south in their area. Yeah, we're going to watch the Turnpike I-95 down towards Brevard County. Just still a little bit of heat and instability down there. A couple of storms we're monitoring, but for the most part here in town, we're in much better shape. Let me just show you the, the latest news here within the last uh, half hour. The severe thunderstorm watch was allowed to expire well before the 5 o'clock hour. Just a, a testament that the, the energy here uh, across a good chunk of central Florida is indeed weakening. But uh, there still are a few pockets of showers and one or two isolated storms. Rain cooled, though, mid-70s up to the north. So we've kind of tapped out the environment there. But down to the south, Polk, Osceola, and Bavard County, still a little bit of instability here. But look at the overall flare of the storms headed more towards the east southeast and that uh, could potentially clip our southernmost communities Polk Osceola on into southern Brevard County here up to the north things are falling apart and falling apart fairly quickly the showers that were approaching Daytona Beach are coming to an end metro areas a few spotty light showers here near Lake Apopka Ocoee headed towards downtown Orlando but as you look off towards the attractions especially Disney there's a pulsing up uh, some showers and some thunderstorms. So we'll continue to uh, monitor this particular corridor. The trajectory on this cluster is more towards the east northeast. So we'll watch Disney, Kissimmee, Haines City here over the next half hour to 45 minutes as that kind of curls a bank towards east. Got a couple more rainfall totals. Marquise has been busy updating this here for me. Pine Lakes, Palm Coast, over two inches of rain. Fabulous news. Lehigh Woods and Bunnell, again, also in Flagler County, doing very, very well in the rainfall department. There has been a little bit of rain here in Orange and Brevard and Osceola counties. We do get a new drought monitor tomorrow. Hopefully we won't see the moderate drought anymore into southern Brevard County. We'll just have to wait and see on how we do with the rain later today and this evening. Let's take a look at that 12 hour forecast. Nice and quiet through daybreak tomorrow morning. A little bit drier. A little bit cooler. Starting to see a few upper 60s here in our northwestern communities. Still the lower 70s, though, from Orlando back towards the coast. 12-hour forecast for Daytona Beach. Afternoon highs uh, in the upper 80s. We take you over towards the coast tomorrow. Winds will be west. Watch the moderate chop there. Water temperatures have jumped up into the mid-70s. Quick look now at Futurecast here. Morning looks good. A few clouds down to the south. Those will clear out uh, later on in the day. Most of Thursday looks good. It'll be hotter with increased sunshine there. Many of us will jump up uh, into the lower 90s. Let's take a look now at Friday morning. Not bad. Clouds arriving though late in the day. Kind of some of the serious blow off for some thunderstorms in the northern Gulf of Mexico, but we do stay dry on your Friday. Certainly some good news for those of you making plans after a long work week. Temperatures tomorrow afternoon, upper 80s at the beaches to around 90 inland areas. 90 to 93. And if you are taking it over towards Volcano Bay tomorrow, you're going to be in good shape. Afternoon highs in the low 90s. All right, looking ahead to the weekend, a cold front will approach. That's going to increase the moisture and the showers and storms late Saturday on into Sunday. In fact, the two-day uh, panel forecast here for Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be hot with afternoon showers and thunderstorms at about 50 to 60 percent. So let's put it all together Thursday, Friday, 92, 95, and then on into the weekend storm coverage going up and we cool back down late Sunday on into Monday. First morning weather on West 2 is sponsored by Cool Today. All right, check this out. A pot of orcas is causing some chaos for boaters. On Sunday, a crew aboard a 50-foot sailboat off the coast of Morocco had to call for help because a pot of killer whales attacked their boat, damaging the rudder. Rescue crews showed up and saved the others just before the boat sank. This is the same pot of orcas that's been towing with boats off the coast of Spain, Portugal, and France since 2020. Experts say so far they've sank at least five boats. We don't know why they're doing it. One hypothesis is that this is 
some kind of playfulness. They swim over, they play with the rudders, and then they leave again. Experts think the orcas may actually be teaching each other how to break the rudders on the boats. West Chi News at 5 is straight ahead. Michelle Imperato is here with what's coming up in the next half hour. Michelle? Jesse, West Chi is continuing our live team coverage of the deadly bus crash in Marion County. What we've learned about the victims, the driver who authorities say is responsible, and the transportation company. Plus, watching for the possibility of more severe storms. Our first warning weather team is tracking where they're headed on our radar. And messy mania hits Orlando again. Will he or won't he play tonight? West Chi has team coverage. First morning weather on WESH 2 is sponsored by Cool Today. What's happening now and what's next? This is the news that matters to you. And it's right here at 5. Michelle Imperato, Jesse Pagan, and first warning chief meteorologist Tony Manolfi. WESH 2 News at 5. Local, live, late breaking. Central Florida traffic can be brutal, but Megan Mackey is here to help you navigate it all. Consider me your local transportation expert. This is what first warning traffic looks like with Megan Mackey, and it's here on West 2 News.